everyone, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. So I am so sorry that it has taken me so long to get to this video. Um, I just anticipate that it's going to be a long one and I have had sick children and I've had a sick husband and I've been sick and just um, everything. My daughter had oral surgery and blah, blah, blah. So um, I haven't just had an afternoon where I haven't had anybody home, it seems like for weeks. So my computer is here. I've got all of the questions loaded up. So I'm just going to launch into it. Um, I'm going to do my best to get through all of these in one go before I start because somebody is going to find something wrong with something I say. I am not, hear me, I am not an Hermes or Birkin expert. I'm going to share my experience and my opinion and my feelings on particular um, questions. The, I am not the word of God, unless you're my kid, in which case I am the final law. But <laughs> here on YouTube, I'm just some random mom who has a couple of Birkins. Um, and, but, a lot of people want to know my feelings on whatever question they have. So I feel like it's worth it for me to put my opinion out there. But by all means, take it with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, this is not meant to be advice or guide you. Um, and if you don't like these kinds of videos, I highly, highly urge you to exit out now. Because I just can't imagine why anybody would want to sit and listen to some middle-aged housewife ramble on about something that's just going to make them angry. Um, in the words of my friend Carol, like, don't hate watch. There's just, like, get a life. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna launch right in. Um, Factory of Sass, hey? Um, it says, Robin, um, Birkin wear and tear. Um, they're like any bag. They wear and they tear, um, depending on how aggressively or how carelessly you use them. Um, I am, as most of you know, not overly precious about my bags, and so they do take some wear. Um, my orange Birkin has more wear than my um, a tube Birkin. Um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just, you know, my my Poteron or my orange. I'm just gonna call it orange for the sake of the the video. My orange Birkin came to me pre loved, and so it already had a couple of no like knocks and dings, and so I was probably. I had already kind of like done the exhale because somebody else had taken the first hit for me. Um, I am, I still put them on the ground. I know I still brace yourself. I still take them on public transport. I'm not even going to address the stupidity of, uh, you know, like if you have a Birkin, you should only take it on in a private. I can't. Um, wow. Um, okay, so wear and tear. It's like anything. If you're asking to see the wear and tear, I'm gonna do updated like Birkin videos, but um, otherwise, it's like anything. It's how you treat it. Um, NYC uh, CG, is there any other bag that you would consider has the same level of practicality and appeal as the Birkin? P.S. Love you in your videos. Thank you. Um, the same level of practicality and appeal. Okay, practicality? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, Birkins are practical in that they hold a lot and um, they're comfortable to carry in terms of like, you know, they, they go in the crook of your arm. They're heavy, they're, they're heavy when they're empty. So the more you fill them, they, they can get pretty substantial. But um, practicality, you know, they, they do hold a lot. And you know, there's no cloth, it's all leather. So you know, if you do spill a little something, it really does just wipe off. Um, same level of practicality that I own, um, like a GST is pretty practical. Um, all of my totes are pretty practical. Appeal, not for me, <laughs> I love a Birkin. So um, I, I hope that's what you were asking. Um, but maybe, for, you know, it, it, if, you're, if, if you're taking cost out of it, no. For me, practicality and appeal, if you're going to factor in cost, maybe like a Celine, um, like a Celine luggage or something like that, because they're also very boxy and they hold a ton and they're pretty, you know, substantial on their leather. And I think they're beautiful bags. Um, so maybe that would be my answer. Um, Christina underscore, underscore stride. Um, what do you like best about your Birkins? Um, when you're out and when you're out with your Birkin, have you noticed any special treatment when shopping around? Um, what do I like best? I just, that's a hard one to answer. It's like saying, you know, like, why do you like your kids or why do you like your husband? No, I'm not, 
I'm not likening my bags to my kids, kind of. Um, I just like them. It's just been a bag that's always appealed to me. Um, and when you're out with your Birkin, have you noticed any special treatment when shopping? <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, if if I'm in, <laughs> if I'm in Chanel or if I'm in you know an Hermes boutique. You know, not Selfridges where I'm known, but you know, like a different one and I plunk it on the counter. It's not that they come running out, you know, with a red carpet. It's just, I think what they, what they recognize, this is going to sound terrible. They probably recognize that I'm not there to just waste time. That if I'm in there, there's a good chance that I, God, this sounds awful, that I have it within my means to purchase something. I'm not saying that that's the right attitude for a salesperson to have, and I'm not saying that I throw my Birkin up on the counter in order to get service. I'm just saying that I have noticed that if I do, if I am carrying a Birkin and I put it up on the counter, I tend to get a look and a look, and then, you know, they generally will come scurrying over more often than not. Um, um, sleek type for you. Hey, Robin, do you know why they changed the year in Craftsman markers? Um, it's not on the strap. It's not on the strap anymore, right? Um, I don't know. Is it not? It is on my Birkin from last year. I got this in 2015, and it's got all the... I don't know if you can... Can I get that close enough? I don't know. You can kind of see them on there. Um, I don't... But I don't know. Maybe is there something has changed? Is there something that's changed? I don't know. I haven't heard. I'm sorry. I'm going to move... This is gonna move a lot and I'm really sorry because I've got my computer balancing. Um, I don't know. So my answer is I suck and I don't know. I, I was not aware that that was, an op that that was something that they were doing or thinking of doing or have done. I'm not sure. Um, Casey Pink World 17, who shouldn't get a Birkin? <laughs> I always dreamed of having one, but then when I think I don't live in any way a fancy life, I think I don't really need it. Um, who shouldn't get a Birkin? I don't know, I think. I think everybody should have a Birkin. No. Um, there, you know, they're a substantial investment. So if you feel like paying that much for something will cause you anxiety to use it, then probably don't do it. Because part of the joy of anything that we have and that we love and that we own is utilizing it and not it's fine to buy something just for the sole purpose of admiring, you know, like a, a vase or a piece of art or, you know, something like that. But in terms of like a car or a handbag or jewelry, it's a shame to buy something that is expensive and feel like you have to keep it for best. Um, I don't feel that way. I carry my Birkins anywhere, everywhere. Um, you know, I don't pick, I don't take them to the grocery store just like, you know, oh, I'm going to go to, you know, Waitrose, so I'm going to grab a Birkin. No, because it's not, it's, it's a bulky bag and it doesn't really fit well in, you know, the, um, the basket unless you're at Target in New Jersey and then I take it, <laughs> see my Instagram photos. But anyway, um, if you're asking like, you know, I'm just a normal mom, should I pass? No, if you have it within your means and it's a bag that you actively want, go get your bag, girl. And you know, you will find reasons and you'll find places to carry it and you'll love it. And it's, you know, it's, I would not be without mine. My hair has gone so flat, but whatever. Um, okay. Uh, okay. And if I butcher your name, I am so sorry. I apologize. So. It's either Kai S. Meaton or Kai Smeaton or Kai Smeaton, but I think it's Kai is probably the first name. Kai some, Smeaton 1, how do you tie your clochette on your Birkin? Um, I loop mine around and then, can you see? Can you see what I've done? Um, I don't like them hanging long. They they have a tendency to rub and I just it's just not my my style. So I have always looped them around. I've done the same thing here. I don't know if I'm getting it in the picture. I don't know why I did that. I just did it. I did it with this one from the word go and I've always I've always preferred that. Um the Lux Junkie. I think you have um, a Samorga or some, I think it's Samorga for one of them. How do you like it? I don't have a Samorga. I have um, a Mai Tai collection. 
uh, insert. How do I like it? I like it. Um, I only, my only gripe is, I'm trying to fit it back in there, is that, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to even show this. Um, they have a tendency, this is hard, to do that in the bag. And so things, like if I just throw something in, it slips down the side. It almost defeats the purpose, unless you're really careful. I'm not careful. Um, but for the most part, I like it, and it does keep things organized. Um, but your mileage may vary. Um, Statkevichika? Statkevichika? That's, I'm going to stick with that. Um, and I'm sorry, I suck. <laughs> do you consider a Kelly bag? And how do you take care of your Birkins? Um, okay, before last night, I would have been like, nope, Kelly is not on my radar. And then um, somebody on, I can't believe, I cannot, I can see the picture. Um, I'll, I'll try and post a thing in here. Um, had a shoulder Kelly that I just all of a sudden, and then one of my um, darling friends on Instagram, um, Stella Natural Ray, she has a Kelly that's beautiful. I've never thought that they were like my, <laughs> to borrow a word from, from Jerusha, I never thought they were my juge, but um, I don't know. I think I might be able to get into maybe a 40 that's really soft and um, yeah, I don't know. Stay tuned. No, don't stay tuned. That I have no plans to buy one, but if one, if I saw a screaming deal on a pre-loved, that's something I definitely wouldn't get new because I am not convinced enough to pay new price, if that makes sense. But if you'd asked me 24 hours ago, I'd have been like, no, and now I'm like, hmm. So there you go. Um, eye candy. Oh, that's cute. Like eye candy, but like eye candy. Cute. I like that. Um, what leather do you prefer for your Birkins and would you ever consider getting a Kelly? Okay, I just answered the Kelly question. There's going to be some repeats. I'm sorry, and I haven't really read through these. Um, what leather do I prefer? I really like Togo um, because it's soft and it is relax. It's starting to relax even a lot more and it's starting to kind of bat wing, which is when it does like this. And I really like that. Um, but then I really like my Chev. Um, to Horam and Dahlbergen. So they're just very two different, very leathers, um, very, two very different leathers. The Chev is much more structured and upright, and it's also the finish on it is a lot um, shinier than the Togo. The Togo has a tendency to be more matte. I like them both though. Um, it would probably be easier for me to answer like leathers that I don't care for in Birkins. Um, the Lux Junkie, hi. I've considered a Birkin, but worried about drawing too much attention to myself. Is that a concern? Or how do you handle that? Um, there are certain circumstances in which I'm not going to carry a Birkin. If I know I'm going someplace dodgy, um, I'm not going to carry a Birkin. Um, although chances are, in certain areas, a Birkin's not going to gather, you know, garner a lot of attention because they're not as widely known as people think they are. They are within the handbag world, but not in general population and you know just average company um I have had people stop me I've had people ask if they can like see it and touch it and carry it and I take those on a case-by-case -case basis like if you're some random person and it's we're on like the street no I'm not gonna let you like take it and touch it and handle it because chances are you cannot run me um if we're standing like I've had people approach me at like a boutique or something like that where we're in the shop and there's security at the door. Yeah, you can look at my bag. I don't I don't care. I'm not precious about it. Like, you know, if I'm if I'm out to lunch with friends and they want to, you know, like have a poke, have it. Like take it. It's just a handbag. It's a great handbag. I've said this before, but it's just a handbag. But I understand if you've never seen one up close and in person, you know, wanting to touch one and inspect it and see what all the fuss is about. Um, so is it a concern? normally no. How do I handle it? Case by case basis. Um, it just depends. Are you a freak? If you're coming up and you're a weirdo, um, I'm going to be probably, I'm going to do this and then hold it. If you're just like, you know, a normal person and you're just like, oh my gosh, I, you know, 
that's a beautiful bag. I, you know, chances are, I'll, you know, I'll sit and I'll chat with you. Not a problem. Um, RLH7. Um, hi, sort of a Birkin question in general. Realistic thoughts on men carrying a Birkin of any size, color, and have you ever seen a man carrying one in London? Um, okay, yeah, I, I have seen men carrying a Birkin. And um, I think it's a specific kind of guy that can get away with it. Um, you have to, okay, so the guy that I saw and that I have seen several times, like down on like Oxford and Bond, mostly Bond, Regent. He's really tall. He looks like he probably does editorial modeling. And he, you know, he's the kind of guy that'll wear like a trilby hat, which is um, like a fedora kind of hat. Um, and he's very chiseled, you know, and he might wear, you know, like a white shirt unbuttoned with suit pants, but you know, suit trousers, but then rolled up with no socks and then brogues and maybe like, a, a, in America, a vest here, a waistcoat. Um, I've even seen like a pocket watch. And then he's got this absolutely beat to hell Berenia 40. And it's just open and it's stuffed and he's got water bottles and papers and he looks freaking fierce. Like I just, and I'm sure he's probably been like, why is this crazy lady looking at me? But you know when you see somebody on the street and you just admire their aesthetic so much and I'm just like, that he has, I just imagine he's got his life like all together because he, I don't know. Um, but then I am very equal opportunity with what guys wear and don't wear. Um, I don't know. Some guys are going to look like an absolute moron trying to carry a Birkin. Um, and it kind of comes around to wearing the Birkin versus the Birkin wearing you. And I'm just going to leave it there because I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes or hurt anybody's feelings or offend anybody. Um, I just think it depends on your personal aesthetic. If you're, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, <laughs> shopping starfish. No, wait. I, oh my gosh. Sh shopping star FJ. Sorry. My vision is not good anyway. So sorry. You're not a starfish. You're just a shopping star. Um, hi, Robin. Thanks for doing a Q&A. You are so welcome. Um, I'm interested to know about the weight of your Birkins. Which other designers, say like Chanel, bags would you say are comparable weight-wise? Does it affect your use of the bag? Do you use more lightweight SLGs to keep the weight down? I am so sensitive to heavier bags. Um, I really struggle to use them. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, let's start. Uh, they're heavy. In my Birk Birkin, in my one... I have a video somewhere floating around and it's all about like my orange Birkin. I actually weigh it. I don't remember off the top of my head and I don't know. My daughter took the scale, the cooking scale to school um, for cooking class. Um, they're heavy though. Like just by themselves. I want to say they're like, I think they're like a pound, just empty. Which doesn't sound like much, but then you start putting stuff in and then they get heavy. Um, what would I say is comparable? Weight wise, maybe a jumbo. Jumbos are pretty heavy. Those are pretty substantial bags. Um, does it affect your use of the bag? Yeah, in that if I know that I'm going to be out all stinking day and I'm not going to be doing a lot of sitting, so I'm just going to be walking, 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 yeah, I'm probably not going to carry a Birkin. I need something that can go on my shoulder occasionally. Um, unless I know that I'm going to be sitting down, you know, like having tea, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Um, do I use more lightweight SLGs? Yeah, I pare down substantially when I'm taking a Birkin. So I will take, it used to be a mini pochette, now it is the little um, like coin pursey thing by Chanel, and I'll just take the bare minimum in terms of cards and cash, and then I'll take a very small um, makeup pouch with just the basics, a powder, a lipstick, like I don't need 17 lipsticks. Well, I need 17 lipsticks, but I force myself to take like two or three. Um, and then, you know, like, a little thing of, you know, headache pills and things like that. Um, I still have to be prepared though, because if the zombie apocalypse happens outside of the house, I need to have like hair ties and things like that. You know, one has to look good during the zombie apocalypse. So um, if you are sensitive to heavier bags and you struggle to use them, okay, my advice would be go for a 30 over a 35 and go for the lightest leather you can find talk to your essay. Um, I'm trying to think of light leathers. 
I'm not I'm not really good on the weights of leathers, just what they look like. Um, talk to your essay. Sarah Burbridge. Bur I'm so sorry. Sarah Burbage. Sorry. Um, what is your favorite charm twilly for your Birkin? Um, I love that particular twilly on this particular Birkin. I am forever trying to find um, on eBay, because this is old. I'm trying to find a matching one to this. I'd love to wrap the handles in this, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. So until then, I just make do with the bow and I'm happy. Um, as far as like charms, like the rodeo charms and stuff, not really my, again, hi Jewish, not my juge. Um, but I like it on other people's. So like I know some, you know, some of my friends have like the poofs, not my thing, but I think it's cute. 20 minutes. Oh my God, this is going to be bad. I'm going to have to break this up. Um, Lee Cameron underscore four. Do you ever worry about it getting stolen, especially if you're t uh, taking to taking on the Metro and train? Um, no, you just have to be aware of your surroundings, but I live in a big city where I have to be aware anyway. And so, you know, um, if I'm walking like on a crowded road, I do in the crook of my arm and then I'll generally hold it as well. You're not going to snatch it from me. I'm not going to let you. Um, when I am on like the tube or whatever, everybody would say, put it in your lap and that's more secure. No, that's at a higher level and it's easier for them to snatch. I would put it on the ground between my legs with my legs kind of around it. The chance of anybody being able to snatch it away from me behind my legs is pretty slim to none. And it's going to be too much aggro for them to even try. And huge, huge, huge like tip if you are traveling like public transport, like the tube or the subway, sit as central in the row of seats as possible. Don't sit by a door. Because a lot of times when people do snatch bags and phones, they are getting off at the very last second as the doors are closing, they snatch them and they run and then you're bye bye It's, it's all over. And you'll never see your bag, you just won't. Um, so to answer that, um, I'm, no, I'm not really worried. When do you decide to use it? Oh, sorry, same person, um, Lee Cameron. When do you decide to use it and when not to use it? Um, I don't use it if I know the weather is gonna be really, really grim. Togo is not impervious to rain, but if you wipe it off pretty quickly, you're fine. Uh, Chev de Cormandal is even more, be is even better in rain, but you still have to wipe it off. But if I know it's gonna be raining all stinking day, it's just too much aggro. And in that case, I take something canvas by Louis Vuitton. Um, so, I usually take it when I'm going to the West End. I just, you know, it's a good opportunity to use them. I don't use them, you know, daily. So I use them when I can. Um, can life, life feels good. Um, can you share pricing? Yeah, my orange Birkin was 13,000 or 12, 12 something dollars. That was pre-loved. And um, my a tube was just under seven pounds. $13,000. 7,000 pounds. Um, did you, ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Did you offer Birkin after purchasing, oh, was I offered a Birkin after purchasing other stuff from Hermes or just randomly when you asked? I'm not gonna get into that um, because people know where I shop and I'm not going to, I am not, I don't want anybody to think that what I, what happened for me or my experience is going to be their experience and that they can just waltz into a, you know, into any store and follow a, like a formula. Um, I will say by and large, if you have a relationship with an essay, you have a higher chance of getting a Birkin, but there's no more wait list anymore as far as I know. And you can just walk in and get a Birkin. They confirmed that on Bond Street the other day for the record. And a friend of mine was there. If you are there and you ask and they have them, that's all I, that's what they told me. Okay. Um, Brittany underscore Eaton, what is the buying process like waitlist? Sorry, I just kind of answered that. I apologize. Um, did you get lucky buying them in store when you did? Um, the first one I stocked pre-love. The second one, yeah, just, you know, luck and relationship. And um, I'll say that I got lucky in terms of like, you know, I wanted a neutral Birkin and I got, you know, a tube, you know, so that's pretty lucky if you ask me. And I got rad hardware, you know, I've got like the brushed gold perma brass, whatever you want to call it. Um, hardware. So in that respect, yeah. Um, T Bateson underscore 14. How many do you have and sizes and leathers? I have two. They are both 35s. Um, a toop. Put her on. Those are my babies. Um, MGAT, uh, what are your thoughts 
of the Teddy Blake brand. Um, no, no, those are, those are, some would call them fake, some would call them inspired, um, knockoff. I do not support in any way, knowingly support in any way, shape, or form um, those types of, no. Um, there's a whole, whole, you guys, ugly underbelly underworld and a lot of those bags, and I'm not saying that the Teddy Blake brand is, but a lot of those knockoff bags are made by child labor and it propagates a horrible industry of human trafficking. I can't. So, um, the rest of the question, what are your thoughts on the bag just being top handled? I like it. Um, because a, a shoulder strap I think would make it a completely different bag. Would I want to make add a strap? No. And thank you so much. You are so welcome. And I'm sorry I wasn't trying to be harsh and horrible about the Teddy Blake bags. But um, I went and I looked because I happened to be looking at my Instagram when that question came through. And I looked on um, YouTube. And there's all these people saying, unboxing my Birkin. And then it's this Teddy Blake bag. And like, if you stop, it's not a Birkin. And that's not because I have Birkin. So I'm like trying to be all, you know, protective. Stop trying to be something you're not. It's not a Birkin. It's it's a I can't. I'm I'm not even gonna go there because I get angry. Um, Miss Sassy Lady. Um, which Birkin do you like the most between the two? Oh, that's so mean. That's like Sophie's choice of handbags. I like them both. Oh my gosh. And they're both they all, they both have like some special thing about them that would make it really hard for me to pick one over the other. Like the Poteron is a hard color to get and the Chef de Coromandel is almost impossible to get in the 35. But then that brush hardware though on my other, so I don't know. I like them both. If I had to just choose the one, I'd probably go with a tube because it's more versatile in, t in terms of like what I can wear it with. Um, okay, somebody said, I like RLH7's question. Oh, okay. That was the man. That, have you ever seen the dude carrying a Birkin? And I went into, I got into that. Um, next one is, will you ever get a Kelly? I answered that. That is by Maronite Lady. I'm so sorry. That's probably a horrible pronunciation. Okay, next. Got a match. Hi. Um, have you ever, ever felt unsafe or like you've been followed because of your Birkin? Yeah, I've had a few like people size me up. I've, I've seen it. It's generally on the tube. I've had people sit across from me and then like look, you know, to see, you can just tell there's, there's a difference between somebody looking at your bag and like admiring it or thinking, oh wow, a Birkin and then looking and thinking, can I take her? Um, and I notice, and as they're looking down, I'm staring hard at their face like the, you know, and then they meet my eyes and they're just like, and I'm like, uh-huh, bring it, bring it. Because you might get my bag, but I will have your DNA. Like I will take an ear, I will have like your under my nails, like don't even, do not even mess with me um, because I will go savage <laughs> for my bags. Um, I'd love to get one, sorry, this is a continuation. I'd love to get one, but I worry that it would make me a target for thieves. Um, I don't, I don't think it makes me a target for thieves for, I just, you know, I've never been like followed, you know, like where I had to like, you know, run or, um, anything like that. Uh, I'm gen, you know, I'm generally not alone. Maybe, you know, when I'm out and about, maybe that changes things. Um, but I'm also extremely aware of my surroundings. You know, I'm not that person that's just like walking around like on my phone, you know, which makes me, you know, kind of a target. I am extremely aware of what's going on around me. So maybe that's the difference. Uh, Hutchinson, Sandra, but my friend Sandra, um, I heard that they are so heavy. Is it true? It is so true. And if you would ever meet up with me, I will bring one and I will let you carry it. I'll let you hold it. I'll let you play and I will let you see and then you can see what you want. So um, call me. Anyway, um, Narellu, Narellalu, Narellalu. Um, do you think the Birkin would be as sought after if it wasn't for the price point? No, mm -mm, absolutely not. If this bag was in Primark, nobody would probably want it. Um, and I'm completely honest about that. I love it beyond that. 
but there is no doubt in my mind, like anything, that the price point affects the exclusivity and whether or not somebody wants it. Um, and you, you call me whatever you want, have whatever opinion you want about me. I don't really, I'm not here to gain anyone's approval. I'm just sharing my knowledge with people that are interested in what I have to say about this particular item. But like I said, if you're here to hate watch, I mean, rock on, but like, man, you have got to have something better to do. Um, or orangey Hermes, <laughs> would you ever get a crocodile Birkin? That I can honestly say no, um, because I'd rather have, for the price of a croc Birkin, I'd rather have four or five regular leathers. And it's just not my, it's just not my thing, it's just not my style. I don't live a croc Birkin lifestyle. I barely live a, I don't even really live a Birkin lifestyle, I just don't care. I, I like making it a casual bag with like some rolled jeans and like, you know, a, an oversized like boyfriend shirt and a ponytail and flats. I think it looks cute. Um, but I, a bur uh, croc? No, I don't do, I'm not into, um, what do you call it? Exotic stuff at all. Turquoise underscore sky. Birkin or jumbo? If you could only choose one. Birkin. Not even a question. Um, if I could only have one Birkin and a jumbo in every color and leather, I'd still go with Birkin. Um, not to say that I don't like Chanel. I keep getting so many texts. It's Francesca. Um, she's so funny. <laughs> hey girl. Um, okay. So I love the jumbo, but I love, love the Birkin. Like I love it. Um, ka, ka, Kaja. Oh wait, maybe Kaja Eichland. Hey, that, I, I think that's it. Hi Robin. Hi. I really enjoy your channel. Thank you. Um, oh, you are simply just fabulous. That is so, so nice, thank you. Um, which leather is the most durable? Probably Togo and Clemence. Um, they just, because they're, a, they're textured and they're soft and um, they just, they take a beating and they're also, they repair fairly easily. Meaning if you take it into Hermes to the spa, they can generally fix the corners up if you need to. Um, Epsom is also extremely durable. Um, some of the least durable though, like, and it's not that it's not durable, it's just that it marks these as like a Berenia, um, and there's another one, and I don't know how to pronounce it, it starts with a V, something natural, um, and they're like, almost like Vaquetta, the Louis Vuitton Vaquetta, and they're untreated, and so raindrops, like, leave marks, scratches, like this, leave, like, the white mark, you can kind of buff it out, but it's always there, so it just depends on the look you want, and that guy that I said that I see around London that's fabulous, his is Berenia, which is one that marks, and it's, like I said, it is beat to hell, and it looks amazing, like, I, I have sized him up, being like, you know, he's tall, but I could take him just for that bag, um, okay, Culture shock art. Um, when did you first decide you wanted one? What made you decide to finally get it? Good question. Um, 2004 was when I really, really thought to myself, I want one of those bags. And I loved it for 10 solid years, which is my indication that like I really, it's worth the investment. Because for that 10 years, I would have carried the hell out of that bag and loved it. And the cost per use, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, what made you decide to finally get it? My husband said I could. <laughs> No, we were finally in a position to where I could get it, and I got it in 2014, and it was a 2004, and it was all the specs that I wanted, and so I kind of felt like it was meant to be. I wanted it in 2004, and it is a 2004, and I wanted the Poteron. I didn't just want orange, I wanted this orange. I wanted palladium, and the leather was even better than I had hoped for. Um, Kelly V... J VJ Lima, I don't know, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna say Kelly VJ Lima. Um, what is your favorite Louis Vuitton bag? It's not a Birkin question, but um, I like the Speedy. I like the silhouette of the Speedy, definitely. Um, Farabos, um, will your Birkins get cousins, the Kelly? I answered that, but maybe. I, you know, that would be something probably in the, in the future. Um, 2028, hi. Um, how much does it cost? Uh, oh, I, th I answered that already, sort of. In the boutique here in London, I don't know current US prices, and I apologize. Here in London, you're looking at about seven grand um, and upward, depending on the leather you choose. 
Um, the resellers sell at ridiculous prices, so no one ever really knows the prices. I know. Um, also, how did you get yours? Because a lot of people say it's really hard to get a hold of one. Again, I don't want to go into the like the dynamics because I don't want to kind of put my essay on blast. I don't want anybody to think that my experience will be their experience. Um, I can tell you that I have been lucky both times. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer, and this is kind of the thing over on the purse forum, if you go over there, your Birkin will come to you. And I know that sounds all Disneyland, and you know, someday my prince will come, and you know, whatever. Um, your Birkin will come to you. When, when it's time, you, you'll find it, and it will happen. You just have to be patient. Sometimes 10 years patience, 10 years worth of patience. But I will say that as much as I wanted it for that 10 years, it was worth it when I finally got it. Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to afford it, but if I win the lottery, then I'm um, chaining myself to their boutique counter until they give me one. I'll tell you what, if you win the lottery and you can go in for two, I'll, I'll get you the Birkin <laughs> and then I'll get me one to go. Like, it'll just, it'll be like a, we'll be twins. See? Hi, you, you down like this, you and me? Okay, good. I'm glad we had this talk. Okay, Susie Tunes, hi. Um, hi, Robin. Hi. Um, looking forward to this video. Oh, good. Enjoy. I hope you're enjoying. Um, your video on the various leathers would be great. Um, yeah, I need to... I thought about doing that and then I hesitated because I don't have a lot of leathers to show you guys and I don't want to get it wrong because I don't have a lot of experience. I know what I know about some of the leathers, but I don't know like firsthand, like, you know, because I've had this Epsom bag, you know, I can tell you how it wears. I don't want to mislead anybody or give anybody information that I, that is a combination of speculation and research because these are not small investments. So, um... I'm going to probably not do one on the leathers, but I can say that if you Google like Hermes leathers, there are a lot of websites that have up close pictures with lots of good information and I would urge you to check those out. Also, um, go into an Hermes boutique and just ask to see the leather book and just explain, just say, look, I am maybe going to be in the market and I would just, I'm trying to do my research and if you go in and you're interested in the brand, not just the Birkin, um, they're a lot more receptive, you'd be surprised. Um, okay, do any other H bag or SLG designs appeal to you, including the little Kelly clutches? I'm not a Kelly clutch person. I think they're so ridiculously overpriced. And then eight, oh, other H bags. Yeah, I like the Evelyn. Um, I like the Bolide. I like the Toolbox. I love the Lindy. Um, the, uh, the Cabis. Some say Herba, Herba, Herbag. Some say Airbag. Um, I know I'm missing some. Oh, the garden party, garden party. I am. Um, I have a small garden party. It needs to go in for spa, and I want to get a big one now because I love it. It's an even better tote for me than like a Louis Vuitton. I know. Um, have a good weekend. Uh, it's you too, coming weekend. <laughs> Because I posted this like two weeks ago. Okay. Um, Stella Natural Ray. Hey, girl. Um, wow. Seems like all of these questions um, that I would ask you myself. So basically she's saying she would ask these. Great idea for a video. Oh, can't wait for this one. Um, well, here you go. And how user-friendly is the bag? This is from Jude. A bunch of numbers. Um, it's very user-friendly. It's, you know, in terms of, you know, it opens really nice and wide. It's got two pockets. If you put in like a purse organizer, you know, um... It's, you know, in that respect, nobody really ever closes their bag. Like I, so as long as you just keep it open, it's, it's actually pretty user friendly. How much was your bag? I answered that. That's Ben Vest. Everyday Glam 113. I love your channel. Thank you so much. That, you guys have no idea when you guys say things like that, how much that means to me. Um, so thank you. Oh, um, you're a great example of a beautiful classy lady with the right amount of sass. That's, thank you. Really. Thank you so much. Um. Thank you. Overall, is a Birkin worth the investment? I think, I, I think I've gotten into that. I think I've answered that. Um, I typically don't change in and out of my bags often. Um, so I don't know if a Birkin would be a wise choice since I would probably use it quite a bit. Oh, then yeah, like girl. If, or, well, boy, I don't know. You could be a boy. I'm not, no judgment. <laughs> um, because there are boys who are glam every day. Um, is it worth the investment? 
if you, I would say you just answered it. If you would use it quite a lot, then it's absolutely worth the investment. I would say question whether or not it's worth the investment if you're gonna save it for best and you're gonna use it three or four times a year because that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Like people, you know, packing away their bags to be used so sparingly because you're trying to like save it. Um, use the bags, you guys, like take them out, you know, just on a normal day because what, what if you're not here next year? And you know, you carried that Birkin and got the joy from carrying that Birkin three whole times. whoop de friggin do You know, like carry that Birkin, enjoy that Birkin. It is a leather handbag. I've seen Birkins that are 25 years old, 20 years old, that look incredible because they care for them, but they carry them. And then you take it in for spa when you know it needs some help and they fix it up for you. And you know, they make it, you know, is, you know, all brand new and pretty and whatever. Um, so Everyday Glam 113, if you think you're gonna, that you're not gonna cycle out of your bags and you're gonna carry the hell out of it, buy one. If it is within your means, absolutely it's worth every single dime, Deutschmark, penny pound, yen, peso, whatever. Chubby Shopper. Hi Robin, hopefully one day I will be offered one. Fingers are crossed for you. Um, please can you share with us your dream color leather size combo that you would snap up immediately? Also, are neutral dark colors better on the Birkin or pop colors? Thank you. Okay, well, I have, <laughs> I've got a neutral and I've got a pop color. Um, my neutral Birkin gets carried more, I'm not gonna lie, but that's because it's cold here a lot and I wear a lot of black. And in my home country, Halloween is a thing and orange and black, I just don't feel confident wearing it all that much. So in the summer though, my orange Birkin gets carried a ton because I'll wear, you know, like some distressed boyfriend jeans, some flats, you know, like a white shirt, you know, maybe my orange click and type, you know, sort of a thing. Um, it depends on your lifestyle. If you want something that you can wear almost all the time, I'd go with a neutral. I'd go with a darker neutral. And this, you really cannot go wrong with this color. Other colors, um, that are fantastic would be like a 10. Of course, black. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many. There's so many neutrals, like gray tones and things like that. Um, Gris, Torturale, I, I know I've just probably pissed off all of France and I'm sorry, but I'm not, I would never say that I speak French, so just, I, you know, I apologize. Um, gris, or gris, 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 vert, 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 vert. It's like a gray green. It's really pretty. Um, I also consider red to be a neutral. So like a rouge H or rouge Osh, as some people call it, is beautiful and would be stunning. Um, so all neutral dark color is better on a Birkin or a pop of color. I mean, I don't know. My next Birkin though, if I were to ever get a third, I want blue jean with palladium. So I don't know if that answers because I consider that a neutral, but it's definitely a color. It's blue, you know. That's a like a fantastic question. If you could have one, I would go with a neutral. I really would. Um, but I love my orange. I'm 45 minutes, I'm so sorry. How much? I'm gonna break it up into two. I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna break it up into a second video so there'll be a part two. Okay, see you guys in a few, bye.